Hi students, welcome to another session of my class. Hope all of you are fine. Stay safe at home. Let us continue our topic. Today we are going to study a new poem, The Fish by Elizabeth Bishop. Yes, let us discuss in detail about our poet Elizabeth Bishop. Elizabeth Bishop, her life period was from 1911 to 1979 yes her life period that uh, that was from 1911 to 1979 and she was born on 8th february in worcester massachusetts yes she was born in worcester massachusetts and when she was five years old she attended two different schools in boston and later joined Bazaar College. Yes, when she was five years old, she attended two different schools and later she joined in Bazaar College. And in college, that is there she met the poet Marine Moore and struck up a deep friendship with her. Yes, she met a poet named Marine Moore in college. That is when she was studied in college and struck up a deep friendship that established a deep relationship between that poet that is Marine Moore and Elizabeth Bishop. At the beginning of her literary career, she was influenced by George Herbert and Gerald Manley Hopkins. Yes, that is our poet Elizabeth Bishop. She was deeply influenced by George Herbert. George Herbert, one metaphysical poet, and Gerald Manley Hopkins. Yes, that is a 20th century poet, uh, Hopkins. Yes, she was influenced by the literary, yes, uh, literary or writing style or uh, literary expression or their ideals or something like that. But just the that means she was deeply influenced by these two writers at the beginning of her literary career. And Robert Lowell too became her lifelong friend. Robert Lowell, another poet, and he became her lifelong friend. She fell ill on a trip to South America and stayed back in Brazil, which became her home for the next 18 years. That is, she spent her lifetime. That is, uh, 18 years of her lifetime she spent in Brazil because she fell ill on a trip to South America and stayed back at Brazil in Brazil which became her home for the 18 years Brazil was her home then her first volume of poetry North and South was published in 1946 this North and South was the first poetry collection by Elizabeth Bishop and it, this is important and very famous. One more question may be asked that is the first poetry collection by Elizabeth Bishop or name a poetry collection by Elizabeth Bishop that is one more question may be asked. North and South is a very famous poetry collection by Elizabeth Bishop and published in the year that is 1946. Her second volume, A Cold Spring, came out in 1955 and next one, Questions of Travel, 1965. And this Questions of Travel, it uh, uh, comprises poems with uh, Brazil as their locale. Yes, here the setting, the setting of the poem that was Brazil. And uh, that was her third collection, that is Questions of Travel. Her last volume of poetry, that is Geography Third, was published in the year 1976. Then Bishop later moved to the United States after 18 years. Yes, she moved to United States where she served as resident poet at Harvard University. She moved to United States and there she served as a resident poet at Harvard University. Then, like her friend 
marine moor and dh lawrence yes i already told you she was uh, she established a deep relationship with uh, so many different poets like uh, robert lowell gerald manley hopkins uh, george herbert marine moor dh lawrence etc so like her friend marine moor and also dh lawrence she was a keen observer of birds and animals for whom she had great compassion that is she was uh, uh, very much interested in nature especially observance of uh, tiny creatures like uh, birds then animals etc and this marine moor the poet marine moor was also influenced uh, by the influenced by nature and also she also expressed those feelings that is her compassion towards these tiny creatures that was expressed in her poems that is in marine moor's poem and that those poems were deeply influenced by our poet elizabeth bishop so like her friend marine moor and dh lawrence she was that means both of these writers are keen observers of nature that is marine moor and dh lawrence and like these uh, uh, poets or these persons she was dh lawrence was not a poet she was a novelist so like her friend marine moor and dh lawrence she was a keen observer of birds and animals and for whom that is uh, she had a great compassion that is she had a great compassion towards these birds and animals she loved those tiny creatures and her abiding passion that is her never ending everlasting passion for the animal world is evident in the poem that is our prescribed for a poem the fish from the title itself we can understand that it is something related with the fish from the title that is the title of our poem is the fish that means it is something that is expression of her love or that keen observance of uh, nature or animals or birds that is expressed in the poem the fish that her never ending passion for the animal world is evident in the poem the fish her deep interest in the world around her is seen in her minute and objective observation and accurate description that means keen observer in the sense means deeply or my he uh, her deep interest in the world around that is um, uh, he um uh, her interest in the world around her is seen in her minute that is her minute and objective observation that means each and everything each tiny things are observed by our poet elizabeth bishop and her deep interest in the world that is her surroundings environment nature Uh, that is seen in her minute and objective observation accurate description of that nature or those tiny creatures in her poems and this objectivity helped her to identify herself with the sights and sounds of nature and give expression to them while displaying emotional restraint and this objectivity this observation this minute observation or keen observance of nature that helped her to identify herself he tried to identify herself uh, with the nature he tried to establish a deep relationship with the nature so this objectivity helped her to identify herself with the sights and sounds of nature she tried to identify herself with the closely with the nature and give expression to them and also with the help of her poems she try to give expression so she try to uh, uh, give life and vigor to uh, the sights and sounds of nature and give expression to them while displaying emotional restraint yes this is what some that details about our poet elizabeth bishop so she was born on 8th february in boston massachusetts and she was deeply influenced by uh, some poets uh, like george herbert gerald manley hopkins robert lowell etc then she was in deep friendship with a, a poet named marine moore when she was studying in college then Uh, her famous poetry collections and then uh, like her friend marine moore and other 
writers she was a keen observer of nature that is birds and animals for whom she had great compassion and her never ending passion towards the uh, nature or animal world is evident in our prescribed poem that is the fish then this objectivity that her keen observ observation that objectivity helped her to identify herself with the sights and sounds of nature and that give expression to them while displaying emotional restraint i think all of you understand about our poet elizabeth bishop that is something about our poem the fish what is this poem about what is the meaning of this poem the fish is a first person narrative poem based on an incident that took place in florida where bishop lived for four years yes she spent four years of her life in florida and 18 years of her life in brazil and this poem is based on a real incident that is the incident that took place in florida where she lived for four years and this poem is in a first person narrative poem that means here the speaker is the poet herself and the poem is about a fishing trip the poem this particular poem is about a fishing trip and describes how the poet caught a tremendous fish is yes, during her uh, during uh, that fishing trip uh, she tried to caught a tremendous a huge fish and held it beside the boat without howling it in howling in the sense means pull or drag forcefully that means the uh, uh, fish is hung in the yes that uh, hook so the poem is about a fishing trip and uh, describes how the poet caught a tremendous fish and held it beside the boat without howling in it that means the she caught a tremendous fish during fish trip and it was yes and that held him beside the boat that means hung in a that is half out of water uh, with her hook and fast in a corner of his mouth that means yes this uh, fish was hung in the hook that is half out of water with her hook that is fishing during fishing she caught a tremendous fish and she started at it for a long time while going through varied emotions in her mind and she closely observes that fish who has hung from her hook and she started at it for a long time she staring at it for a long time she observed deeply while going through varied emotions at that time varied emotions was passing through her mind when she was staring at this huge fish that is detachment fascination and at last um, felt finally sympathy for this battle worn fish and surprised at the tame surrender of the fish she began to examine it closely yes the this uh, this a uh, fish is yes, that is now calm and quiet and hung in the hook and surprised at the tame surrender of the fish she began to examine it closely it was old yes she identified that this fish was an old one gnarled gnarled in the sense means rough twisted because of its old age then heavy it was a huge one unattractive it is not attractive and bore the signs of earlier struggles yes and bore the signs of earlier struggles maybe uh, struggle with uh, some other fisherman and the frightening gills fresh crisp blood that can cut so badly drove home the fact that the fish was a veteran fighter who had fought long and hard for survival the marks on his body that shows that that a frightening gills fresh crisp with the blood that can cut so badly and all this yes draw home the fact that express the fact that express the fact that the fish was a veteran fighter here in this particular 
poem, she tried to attribute human qualities to this fish. She considers this as a brave warrior or a veteran fighter who had fought so many times with other fishermen and fought long and hard for survival. As she gazed at the fish and again and again she closely observed this fish, that is she is staring or she gazed at the fish, she began to see him in human terms. That means she attributed human qualities to this fish. She considered this as a brave warrior. An old and wrinkled man, she considers, who has weathered many hardships in life. That is, she compared this fish with the old uh, wrinkled man who has weathered many hardships in life. The fish becomes a symbol of endurance, victory and survival in the battle of life. Yes, the fish. Here the fish represents or it becomes a symbol of endurance, victory and survival in the battle of life. The, that, that's why in the previous line, yes, she tried to attribute human terms and tried to compare him with an old and wrinkled man. That means she tried to attribute uh, human characteristics or human qualities to this fish. And the poem is suffused with the metaphors. Yes, she used so many metaphors, similes, and other literary rhetorical devices and images that appeal to the senses. And these literary devices transform the seemingly ordinary poem into a reflection on human existence. Actually, it was a symbol, ordinary poem. That is uh, something about uh, one tremendous fish, huge fish. But with the help of those literary devices, her application of that similes, metaphors, rhetorical devices, images that appeal to the senses, this transform the seemingly ordinary poem into a reflection. Yes, this ordinary poem. He transformed this ordinary poem into a reflection of human existence. That's why she said that the fish becomes a symbol of endurance, victory and survival in the battle of life. This is the, yes, uh, gist of the, our poem, the fish. The fish is about, the poem fish is about a fish she has caught during, fish, during a fishing trip. And she tried to analyze or she tried to closely observe that fish. And a varied emotions are passing through her mind. And she tried to equate or attribute human qualities. Or she tried to explain this fish. Or she began to see though that fish in human terms. And at last she considers it as a symbol of endurance, victory and survival in the battle of life. I think all of you understand this uh, introductory part of the poem, The Fish. There is a homework for you. Write a note on Elizabeth Bishop. Write your homework and send back to me. Thank you. Have a nice day. See you again. Let us continue in the, the poem. The poem will be continued in the next session.